So tell me about this space, this kitchen we're in today. What happens here? This is the test kitchen. This is the innovation kitchen where we kind of, you know, mimic what a real a and is, uh, except the fact that we have 10 times more equipment because we have different specs for equipment and we kind of validate every product that we create here should work on all the equipments. All the innovation work, all the creation of recipes, new exciting limited time offers. Um, in my role, I take care of food, beverage, equipment, and special projects. So it's a pretty wide net. So when it comes to coming up with a new menu item, where do you begin? Where do you look for inspiration? So I would say it's, it's out in the world. I think we are more connected to food than we were ever before. And uh, I always joke around with folks in the office. I, my source of news today is TikTok. And I spend way too much time on, on social media than I should. But there's just so much happening with food. And, and it's good to stay connected. Uh, we also work with over a dozen different publications and a lot of our suppliers that kind of have um, have this kind of dialed down to a science where uh, we receive something which is trends, trends analysis, flavor forecasts. There are different kind of life cycles of flavors. I would say there's more than 30, 40 different sources of information that we gather all of that, we create everything here, and then provide the brief to our suppliers to come up with that recipe. So. All of our sauces are custom made for us. Um, for the most part, the recipes would be something that was first made here, and then we kind of commercialize it on a much larger scale. What would you say is the top trend in flavor development right now? What flavors are you forecasting? One of the things that is extremely, extremely, um, I, won't, I won't use the word trending, but it's just something that's becoming more and more common is umami. And umami is referred to kind of that savory mouthfeel that can come from anything from parmesan to tomatoes to mushrooms to truffle. And I, what I like about umami is that then you're not restricted to an ingredient, you're restricted to a experience, right? Um, what we like to look at is what's different and unique. So what we are seeing is mashups where you've got something sweet and spicy at the same time. So hot honey is probably a done and done flavor, but there's other elements of, of kind of mixing up sweet, smoke and spicy uh, and overall, I would say in Canada, um, spicy has just taken off in the last four years. And it's not your traditional hot sauce spicy. It's not your vinegar-based spice. It's a lot of fresh spice. It's a lot of ingredients such as jalapenos, um, um, uh, different Mexican chilies, uh, whether it's ancho. Uh, but people are just so much more open to exploring and trying stuff, right? Like we've also done testing with sauces such as harissa, which is a North African condiment. So I would say it's a very exciting time to be in Canada and kind of see how the growing demographic, the new immigrants that are coming in, how they are shaping up the cuisine and the, the kind of flavor trends. And I'm super excited for what's, what's to come in the next few months, years. So how do changing demographics factor into what we see on our fast food menus? Uh, I would say changing demographics influence the way um, new flavors get introduced to more and more guests. Um, so most of these people are coming from different parts of the world. I think they do come with their own uh, set of flavor profiles that are so unique and distinct. The challenge for me or the fun part for me is how do you then put it on a burger? They consume a lot of fast food, but it might be slightly different back in their uh, countries uh, versus the kind of flavor profile that we have here. So it's kind of important for us to acknowledge that and offer something that would be exciting for them. It is Canada today, you know, and what we have is a much more diverse range of flavors and, you know, this melting pot of cultures from Asia, from India, from pretty much all over the world. So I would say, yes, it's changed and it's changing and, and again, super exciting. Tell me a little bit about this kitchen and what your process is here, how you actually take an idea and turn it into something that people see on the menu. It would usually involve me and my team uh, making a recipy, trying it. Um, taste is extremely important. Uh, I am lucky enough to have been trained in sensory, so we are actually able to break down every component. Uh, I always joke around with people, you should never see me eat because nobody eats a burger like that. Nobody breaks it apart and chews it one by one and then puts it back together and then... But it's so important in, in terms of some of the flavors that we are developing uh, because sometimes when you work with heat, you've got upfront heat or back heat and we kind of want people to enjoy it in a certain way. 
once we kind of like a recipe, then we look for, uh, you know, we have this amazing network of our suppliers that we work with, our partners actually, and we kind of, you know, give them the recipe, give them the idea, and then they come up with a sauce, for example. So if you can see here, that is development work happening for just two sauces, and we've got, I don't know, about 20 different versions of that. So for us, we, we kind of want to make it our own. We want to, we want to, we want to be proud of it. Uh, and uh, of course, the sign-off does happen only once we like it. Um, it would be hard for me to nail down just one method of doing it because that's just for sauces. And if it's a new protein or if it's a new another ingredient, then it's a whole new process for that too. Uh, but it is a lot of detailed work. It's a lot of trial and error and I would say a lot of error. Uh, and that's what kind of makes you strong because you, you know you've done that work in the back end and you've made those mistakes. So when you do put out that final product, it is something that we are extremely proud of and, it, and, and kind of always excited that, you know, it's almost like, okay, what do people think about it, right? So. How long does it take to develop a new menu item? So there is no one measure for this, but I would say, yeah, the fastest is like four to five weeks. Then that's an anomaly. That, that, that was like, like really fast. Like we had to push a few people there. Uh, but usually I would say if you're trying to develop a flavor sauce or something else, um, again, depending on what version number we are on, because sometimes we start with one and end with 17 or 17A, um, but it can take a few months. But then if it is slightly more complicated, such as a new protein, then there's, there's a little bit more testing that goes into that. There are some products that have taken, a f taken more than two and a half years. Tell me about the Piri Piri burger. Where did that come from? The recipe actually came from one of our franchisees who noticed that that, that was a hack that was happening organically in restaurants and sometimes the staff was making it for themselves, right? Or guests were coming and asking for it. Like I'm from India and there's a big, big population of vegetarian folks there and don't eat meat, don't eat chicken, but we have hash browns. And okay, can I get this burger, but can you put a hash brown in it, right? And one of the franchisees actually brought it to the um, uh, attention for a few folks in marketing as well as uh, us in innovation and said hey like this is happening right and and then we said okay we we want to embrace that we want to see and we want to make that better so we wanted to give them the right tools um, so we created the piri piri uh, aioli for that burger um, and you can have it with beef chicken or hash brown so it kind of helps to like if you want to eat beef today but you could come back tomorrow and have a hash brown and they are completely different uh, but the sauce itself um, I wanted people to kind of experience Piri Piri for what it is because um, not a lot of people know what Piri Piri is, right? Like there's a, there's a few um, a few folks who might know it from some other places that serve it, but we wanted it to be front and center. Piri Piri is spicy. Uh, you don't hold back the spice, but we kind of kept the spice quite fresh. So you get like that spice right up front. There's no throat burn. And that spice up front actually carries through the entire duration of when you eat it, but it's not something that burns your face. It's just this pleasant heat that stays with you and makes you want to come back for another one. Is that the first time that's ever happened that you developed a menu item based on a menu hack? Uh, that would be correct. Um, it's not the last time, I can almost guarantee you that, because you know we are not in the restaurants. And, and, and it's really important for us to listen to our guests, listen to our colleagues listen to our staff that is working in those restaurants day in and day out and for us it was really important to do it and so yeah, the first time but not def definitely not the last time. What constraints do you have to keep in mind when it comes to developing a new menu item? I would say there's two. The first one is how does it align to our strategy? You know, is it going to, is it going to do something that we set out to do in the first place, right? So that's kind of important. Otherwise, we could be developing 100 recipes a year and not know really what to do with them. Uh, the other thing is, I would say, I can make a great recipe here in the kitchen because of my background. Can our staff do it on a daily basis who may not have the same 25 years of culinary experience, right? And how do you then take, take what I do here and expand that to over a thousand restaurants and ensure consistency, ensure ease of operation and ensure that our guests get a great experience every time? How do you make sure that people get the same thing every time? So there's a bit of science to this art. Um, so I, I, culinary is always about this artistic imagination and the creative mind of the chef. 
but then we kind of drill that down into a more scientific way to ensure that you know every application of the sauce is going to deliver the same uh, flavor profile and then we've obviously got very strong operational um, standards in place that you know staff has to follow uh, and then we kind of provide training and refresher training to ensure that the staff remembers how to do them, right? So, uh, but they all follow the same principle. They would all, uh, you know, whether we have the fryer buttons that are programmed for every, every product that goes in, there's no guesswork. Uh, there's a lot of timers, there's a lot of beeping, there's a lot of sounds in the kitchen, but all of that maintains our uh, operational standards and ensures that we have the exact same product throughout the country. Why bother coming up with new menu items? Why not just say, these are our core products, this is what we're good at, and stick with that? The first thing is that life would be quite dull then, you know, at least for me, because um, there's just so much fun in create, creating new stuff. But if it's dull for me, it's going to be dull for our guests too, right? You know, because uh, a lot of times people have their favorites, but they want to try something different. They want to try something new, you know? I mean, even if you look at your own um, menu plan at home, if, if I told you for the next year, these are the only five things you can eat, I'm pretty sure within the first week or two weeks, you'd kind of get bored and want to go out and try something different. So I would say limited time offers, new flavors, kind of provide that excitement, provide a, provide a new reason for our guests to visit our restaurants again, um, and also invite new guests, guests who may not want to come or may not have heard of us, but now because we have something unique and different um, that, that kind of helps them take that choice and come and try it.